Good evening. Welcome to the January 14th, 2013, first meeting of 2013. I got that right. Uh, Valley View School District. Um, Mr. Venegas is absent, so Mr. Gugis, will you lead us in the pledge? <clears throat> Follow me. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Hanson, board affirmation statement, please. Our mission is to ensure that all students are prepared for college in a successful life, academically, socially, and emotionally, as well as equipped with the necessary tools to have options and make decisions about their long-term goals. This will be accomplished by believing and working towards all students learning through rigorous curricula, meaningful and effective instruction, consequently demonstrating mastery on high quality assessments with all stakeholders being held accountable through the process. Dr. Mitchum, the agenda please. Mr. President, I would like to ask the board to approve the agenda as presented. Motion. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Post same sign, the ayes have it. Moving down the agenda, Mr. Grisafi, Treasurer's Report, please. This is the part we all know and love. Treasurer's Monthly Report for December 2012 includes your financial reports, your balance sheets, summary of revenue, and a summary of expenditures and encumbrances, and the interim obligation payments for December 2012, totaling $3,231,260.22 for your consideration and action. Motion to approve the Treasurer's Report as presented. So moved. Second. Motion and seconded. Is there any discussion on Treasurer's Report? Hearing none, seeing none. Roll call vote, please. Member Hansen? Yes. Member Campbell? Yes. Member Curran? Yes. Secretary Bull? Yes. Vice President Gugis? Yes. President Quigley? Yes. 5.2. Schedule of bills for January 2013 totals $1,999,471.17 for your consideration and action. Motion to approve the schedule of bills. So moved. Second. Motion and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, seeing none. Roll call vote, please. Member Hansen? Yes. Member Campbell? Yes. Member Curran? Yes. Secretary Bull? Yes. Vice President Gugis? Yes. President Quigley? Yes. 5.3 summary of investments December, property taxes received for December, state funding update for December, and the trust school trust activity account information reports are there for your information. If you have any questions, be happy to answer them at this time. Oh, sorry, we're not in class. Uh, State of Illinois did owe us just under four point, or just under three point eight million, I think it was in the last meeting. Maybe four million. This is called four million. We're now at eight point six, and I see that the transportation fund is three point five million dollars deficient. Is that correct? Uh, it is, and the funny thing is, uh, what you have there uh, has been updated. Uh, we did receive uh, three payments. Uh, since the report went live to you, I believe on the 9th, uh, I'm looking for that update here. Yes, um, uh, we received 596,000 in uh, special education reimbursement, personnel reimbursement for special ed, uh, over a million dollars, uh, 534,000 for drivers, uh, I'm sorry, 53,000 for drivers education, uh, and uh, regular and special ed transportation of a million four. Uh, so what was $8.6 million is, uh, uh, decreased by 3.2, leaving us with a balance of uh, just under 5.5 million owed. So again, we're, we're still we're still behind, uh, but it's uh, and it's creeping up. No, we're still about a quarter behind. Uh, is okay. what is what it is. So uh, we continue to monitor that. The, the question, I guess, you, you continually ask yourself is, will they ever catch up? Well, one of the things on the chopping block, I believe, is for the reduction in transportation funding. That's one of the things being discussed in uh, Springfield. We already took a 15% hit, correct? Actually, it was a 42% reduction in the, in the prorated amount. Right, uh, which so equates to? It, it was actually 20, about 24%. Actually. 24%, yeah. okay, and they're looking at another 15%, is my understanding. There are several formulas that are being discussed down downstate um, in terms of how, what would be a more fic, uh, efficient, effective way to uh, reimburse school districts for transportation. Um, on one of the formulas, uh, I, I believe we stand to gain. Uh, another, we possibly break even, uh, which at least is good news and that we wouldn't lose. Um, but again, you, ha you have to hope that they don't cut transportation reimbursement completely and just say, 
you know, we're not we're not going to reimburse the school districts. Uh, right. what, and one of the big fears too is that the state's going to take some of their pension burden and put it squarely on the back of the local districts. Uh, that is a it's not it's not just a fear it's a a real fear. Uh, f fortunately, they didn't do a pension fix that did that because they didn't do a pension fix. They decided to punt in the last day of the session, but uh, that will be Senate Bill One has been uh, already pr proposed, and it's a 402-page legal document. If you're looking for something to do some night and you want to pour through that thing, uh, go right ahead. Fortunately, we have people who are experts in that, and they have done some breakdown to it. I'm not exactly sure what that's all going to mean at the end of the day. That's why we have guys like Gary. But uh, as, as I understand it, there was not a swap in there at the time, correct? That, that seems to be uh, the case, yes, for Senate Bill 1. Okay, good. So right now, as far as our local tax burden goes, that's not changed. So, Gary, real quick, um, uh, Assistant Superintendent Grizafi, the all schools trust account activity. Mm -hmm. Are we squared away on those? Uh, we are. Um, we did. Uh, we did have a couple findings uh, in the audit again. Um, some missing receipts, but again, with 20, uh, 21 schools, uh, as many transactions as are conducted on an annual basis. Uh, you're bound to miss a receipt or two. So uh, we continue to work toward a, a perfect uh, 10, if you will, uh, in that regard. Where would you, where would you score us now currently? 99.5%. Um, so we have no major findings this year? Correct. Okay. <coughs> Any others? Uh, moving down the agenda, consent agenda items. Mr. Mitchum. Mr. President, I would last, like to ask the board to approve consent agenda items 6-1, board meeting minutes, December 10th, 2012, 6-2, executive session meeting minutes, December 10th, 2012, 6-3, trips, Bolingbrook and Romeoville High School, and 6-4, gifts, step, and Bolingbrook High School. Motion to approve. So moved. Second. Motion and second. Is there any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Member Hansen. Yes. Member Campbell. Yes. Member Curran. Yes. Secretary Bull. Yes. Vice President Gugis. Yes. President Quigley. Yes. Pillars of Valley View. And I am at a loss because my packet doesn't have a sheet with. Oh, yes, it does. I stand corrected. <coughs> Great job, Shelley. Uh, from uh, where are we at? Jonas Salk. Member Hansen. I'd like to introduce the principal from Jonas Salk, Michelle Remote. Good evening, Dr. Mitchum, Assistant Superintendents, Board Members, and Audience Members. I am Michelle Rommelt, the proud principal at Jonas Salk, and Jean Bruno is our Assistant Principal. Just making sure I don't lose Ronley, our guest of honor. <laughs> <laughs> Ronley Matthews Goldman is our Wonder Woman at Jonas Salk. Her effort is above and beyond what can be expected. She has been a supported education instructional aide at Jonas Salk since August of 2004. In the classroom, she can be counted on to help support students with special needs, ensuring that they make academic, behavioral, and social-emotional gains throughout the year. Ms. Goldman, or Ms. Ronley, as our students call her, brings in materials from home, coins to count, rocks, whatever is needed, Ronley will bring it in. In addition to her classroom responsibilities, Ronley has become our MAP testing proctor extraordinaire. She arrives to work early each day and sets up the computer lab every morning for the first group of students who will be testing. She keeps track of students needing makeup testing or retesting throughout the administration window. The entire process runs seamlessly because of Ronley's dedication and hard work. After school, Ronley can be seen at the pump house near our school, making sure students walk home safely. Ms. Goldman is also a top-notch handy woman. If Ronley here as a staff member is in need of an item for their classroom, for example, a shelving unit, she doesn't buy it, she builds it. Ronley is a dedicated employee who goes above and beyond the expectations of the job. She is truly a pillar of Valley View. Thank you. All right, thank you. 
Oh, next, Mr. Gurgis. I'd like to introduce Sarah D. Donato from A. Vito Martinez Middle, Middle School. Good evening, members of the board, Dr. Mitchum, senior leadership, and members of the community. It is with honor I introduce you to Ms. Sharon Zerwinski, a pillar of Valley View. Sharon has worked in Valley View as a classroom aide since 1997. During her time at Martinez Middle School, she has always supported the students and staff with whom she works. This year, she began working with stu two students with very high needs, both socially and academically. Sharon took this challenge on and helped these students find a routine that fit their needs. She has even given up her lunch multiple times to help them adapt to the lunch procedures at middle school. With the continued support of Mrs. Erwinski and the opportunities provided by the classroom teachers, these two students have progressed significantly since they've started. One of the students, who was nearly nonverbal before starting, has improved her language development to, to include several words. The other student who used, used to need a redirection at least 45 to 50 times per class period now only needs a redirection three to four times a class period. Mr. Winsky has built a relationship with these students that provides her with the tools to meet their unique needs, which in turn allows them to learn in their least restrictive environment. If that isn't enough to be a pillar, she maintains her focus at work while caring also for her, her elderly parents who need supportive care. Sharon Zerwinski is a model to the rest of us about seeing the positive qualities in every situation and capitalizing on the inherent strengths within all people. In both her professional and personal life, she has taught us at AVM that through perseverance and a positive attitude, anything can be achieved. It is my honor to introduce Ms. Sharon Zerwinski. And last but not least, Mr. Curran and Bolingbrook High School. I'd like to introduce the principal, Mr. Michael White. Good evening, President Quigley, Vice President Gouges, trustees, Superintendent Mitchum, senior leadership and community members. It is my pleasure to introduce Bolingbrook High School's uh, Driver's Education Department Chair, Chris Frenzen, who will be introducing Calvin Sanders as the Bolingbrook High School's Pillar of Valley View. Chris. Tonight, Bolingbrook High School is proud to nominate Calvin Saunders as a pil Pillar of Valley View School District. Calvin has been teaching for 26 years for the past 13 years in the driver's education department at Bolingbrook High School. Calvin began his career in Valley View School District teaching physical education at Jane Addams Middle School and then moving to teach physical education at Humphrey Middle School before coming to BHS. In addition to teaching, Calvin also served as head basketball coach at BHS and girls track coach at BHS. He has been a contributing member of the driver's education department and is always willing to help his students. Calvin is very well respected by both his colleagues and students and combined with his efforts is the reason why he is a pillar of Valley View School District. Thank you, gentlemen. Moving down the agenda, Romeoville High School, Illinois State Scholars. I'm assuming that means we get a visit by Mr. Kinder. I'm, I'm just laughing. I'm excited about this Illinois State Scholars. <laughs> I am. I'm really excited. Illinois State Scholars, come on down. Yes. You know, it's something we should be excited about. Yes. Good evening, President Quigley, Vice President Gujas, Secretary Bull, members of the board, Dr. Mitchum, senior leadership, 
members of the audience and members of the community. Um, first, before I get on with the state scholars, first, congratulations to those pillars, and also congratulations to those nationally board certified recognized teachers that we're going to recognize here tonight as well. An awesome accomplishment. Those teachers helped create some of these great students that we're going to introduce here tonight. So congratulations to you. Romeoville High School, on behalf of the Valley View School Board, would like to recognize 34 Illinois State Scholars that Romeoville High School has this year, 17 of those which are present with us the evening. Uh, being recognized as an Illinois State Scholar is an achievement based on the first six semesters of academic performance coupled with their outstanding performance on standardized tests. So without further ado, 17 of the 34 Illinois State Scholars are as follows. The first, Adab, Adebawali Adalebu. <laughs> Megan Boots. <laughs> Nicholas Coretto. <laughs> Sierra Floyd. <laughs> Nathan Ford. Marcus Gonzalez, Joshua Hamilton, Caitlin Hammock, Natalie Holstein, Keith Jett, Taylor Lafever. Faith Monaco, Nicholas Miller, Sindhu Paul, Nicholas Sock, Kelly Sweeney, and last but definitely not least, Melissa Waddell. Principal, Principal Kinder, I have a quick question for you. Congratulations. Principal Kinder. Um, oh, sure. Congratulations, Melissa. What, um, how many Illinois State Scholars did you have last year and the year before? Do you know? 34. 34 last year as well. Okay. Excellent. Good job, guys. <laughs> Don't feel like you got to stick around. We know you probably have homework. <laughs> Next up is the Bolingbroke High School honors students. And I'd Mr. White, if you would. I'd like to reintroduce Principal Michael White. Oh, I'm sorry. All state. Oh, by the way, uh, while he's standing up there, get on TV. Put him on TV. Stand by the microphone. Put him on TV. Uh, Mr. White had two sons, or has two sons, that were both honored over the weekend to play in the Senior Bowl, is my understanding. I did not have a chance to see the Senior Bowl, but I do understand that she had two sons. You should be very proud of that. Because uh, I'm sure that's a great athletic honor that not a lot of people can uh, claim. I don't know if Ronnie Bull played in the Senior Bowl, but I think he did too. I did. He's yeah. a little bit older than your sons, but uh, <laughs> I hope it went very well for them, and uh, congratulations on that. I appreciate that. I'm just as proud. Both of them actually, they both graduated as well uh, from their prospective colleges in December, so we celebrated that too. So two kids, two different schools, both made Senior Bowl. Correct. Nice. Yes. Same team or they same, they were on the same side, east side, at the um, Casino uh, Del Sol. Ronnie just said, we just found out he was the MVP of the Senior Bowl when he was in college. So. They weren't. <laughs> <laughs> They're just trying to not get hurt. <laughs> I'm going to go out on a limb. Are they, just based on your physical size, are they safeties or cornerbacks? One is a cornerback. The other is a wide receiver. Okay. They're 6'1", 185 pounds, a little bit different than my stature. Real fast. 
real fast. There you go. They, that's my stature. <laughs> Congratulations. Your mom's other side. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, good evening again. It is my great pleasure uh, to introduce our athletic director who works extremely hard to ensure that our students uh, get um, the proper physical and mental and emotional um, exercise that they need in order to be recognized as fall season All-Staters. But I'd like to introduce to you who will be recognizing our fall season All-Staters uh, tonight our athletic director, Rob Rose. Rob. Thank you, Michael. Uh, from really fast to really slow, I guess. Um, first off, uh, I'd like to thank Dr. Mitchum, senior leadership, members of the board. You like that, Rick? Were you an interior lineman? <laughs> I was. And uh, audience members, we're, we're very fortunate uh, at Bolingbrook High School to have three of our students honored here tonight. All seniors, we're going to miss them very much. Um, we have uh, first up Kiara Hill, who uh, was a member of our volleyball team. Kiara, why don't you come up? Coach Burkott, you can come up too. I'm going to introduce all three, and then we'll kind of do this uh, all at one time. The other student we have uh, is Janelle Vilas, who I also had the pleasure of seeing at uh, some of you I know, board member Bull. Uh, Dr. Mitchum were, were at our Madrigal Dinner. Phenomenal performance at the Madrigal Dinner. She's being recognized at All, all State. And uh, finally, we have John Ivlo, who's going to talk a little bit about uh, Omar Stover. Omar could not be with us here tonight, and John is going to tell you the reason why. Uh, so without further ado, it's not about me. I'm going to introduce first up uh, Amy Rupsis, who's going to talk a little bit about uh, Janelle, followed by Coach Burkott, and then finally Coach Ivlo. Good evening. Um, Janelle Villas is a senior at Bolingbrook High School who is heavily involved in the arts. She is queen of magicals this year, as well as a section leader for Sunrise Singers. In these groups, she helps to run rehearsals and give feedback to her peers. She also has arranged music, and then another word for arranged music is composed and written music for these groups. She is heavily involved in the theater program at BHS, including having leads in the fall play and musical this school year and is also serving as president of the Thespian Troupe. Additionally, outside of BHS, she's involved in the Park District's Stand Force as a dancer and teacher. She is also heavily involved in her church. Janelle plans on majoring in theater next year, and last weekend was courted by over 20 schools who are interested in her attending their theater programs. Janelle is an outstanding representative of our school and community, and we are proud to send her to Peoria next week to perform with the top achievers in music in Illinois at the ILMEA All-State Festival. Congratulations, Janelle. Next up, I'd like to bring up uh, head volleyball coach Andrea Burkott. Good evening. Um, every elite athlete, no matter um, what sport, that they play um, goes through a process and to become an elite athlete. And the process of what brought Kiara here today is really what is just so enjoyable for me as a coach. I first met Kiara and her mom when she was in seventh grade at Brooks Middle School at a volleyball match. I approached both of them and presented them with the opportunity to invest in the sport of volleyball a little bit more seriously with the possibility of um, her earning a scholarship someday. Little did I know that mom and Kiara would take me up on that offer. Since that time, Kiara and her family have made sacrifices physically, emotionally, and financially to make this a reality. Kiara also dedicated many extra hours of work in the gym to make sure she would be on the right track to, she needed to be to be the best. The process has been the biggest joy for me as a coach, seeing this shy seventh grader grow into a confident volleyball player and young lady. I will name just a few of her accomplishments since I met her that day at seventh, in seventh grade. She is a four-year varsity starter. She made the top 200 players to watch in 2012. She was on, voted to the United Township All-Tournament Team junior and senior year, Warrior Blast All-Tournament Team her senior year. She made All-Area junior and senior year, MVP junior and senior year. She was the um, so uh, Southwest Suburban Conference 
um, team as well her junior and senior year. She got um, she pl got the opportunity to play the 2012 Sports Town Chicago All Star Match, and this year 2012 All State Top 50 Honorable Mention. Last but not least, and I think the most important, she is now in a position to get her college education paid for because of all of her successes that she's able to accomplish as a volleyball player. Her hopes and dreams have now become a reality. Um, congratulations, Kira. And last but certainly not least, I'd like to bring up head football coach at Bolingbrook, John Iblow. Good evening, everyone. I'm here tonight representing Mr. Omar Stover. I have with me his mother, Ms. Wanda Morgan. Wanda, can you come on up here? And um, as Rob Rose said earlier, Omar cannot be here because Omar started classes today at the University of Wyoming in Laramie, Wyoming. He um, sacrificed his summer and took English classes so he can graduate early. He graduated as a midterm grad enrolled in the uh, University of Wyoming on a full ac um, athletic scholarship to play football. We're very proud of Omar. Again, it's a tribute to mom for not making him work and, uh, you know, forking over the money to pay for summer school. But I think it all paid off in the end with this free education he's received. He's a great kid and um, we're sorry to miss him and we're sorry he couldn't be here. I texted him before I came. He said it's uh, minus 16. The high was zero today. <laughs> so he's loving Laramie, Wyoming. So Mr. Omar Stover and Ms. Wanda Morgan, congratulations to all you. We'll steal the mic one more time and tell you that um, Omar, to the best of my knowledge, in the history of football, um, is the only the second kid to graduate at midterm in a role in school, the first one being Antonio Morrison last year, and we've got a third one on schedule to graduate at midterm next year and receive a scholarship. So that's become the new trait trend, which shows you how serious these kids are about their academics. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. Board certified teachers, Dr. Mitchell. Thank you. As I sit at the podium and listen to all these success stories, a couple things come to mind. Uh, the great love and support that these uh, students and student athletes receive at home from their parents, whether it be mom and dad or a caretaker or mom or just dad, but the tr tremendous support that they receive at home uh, that enables them to come to our district and be successful. And, and second, and equally as, as important, is the support that they receive in this district by the wonderful staff members that we have here who genuinely care and support our kids despite any circumstance. And I think that these kids should be commended, their parents should be commended, and our staff should be commended for the hard work that they do to ensure the success of our, of our students. With that said, uh, we have 26 nationally board certified teachers and we're adding four to those roles, so those roles are growing uh, each year. Uh, these teachers can be considered some of our best teachers as a result. Uh, just a little bit about the National Board. The National Board for, for Professional Teaching Standards is widely recognized as a source for the highest standards and practices that lead to improved teaching, leading, and learning. National Board Certification, a voluntary assessment program designed to develop, retain, and recognize accomplished teachers and to embed ongoing school improvement in, school, in schools nationwide was achieved through performance-based assessments and testing that takes one to three years to complete. While state teacher credentialing programs set the basic requirements to teach in each state, national board certified teachers must demonstrate advanced teaching knowledge, skills, and practices. Completion of the national board professional teaching standards certification process signifies that teachers have developed and demonstrated the skills required of an accomplished education professional. We have four of those teachers with us tonight. 
The first teacher that I would like to introduce from Oakview Elementary School, who teaches English as a second language, is Adelina Rivera. Adelina has been with Valley View for seven years, spending the past two years as an ESL teacher at Oakview Elementary School. She has also been an ESL teacher at both Pioneer and Beverly Scoff. Prior to joining VVSD, she taught for four Valley View School District. I used an acronym. I just wanted to make sure everyone understood Valley View School District. She taught for four years in the Chicago Public School System. She holds a bachelor's degree from DePaul University. That is a great, great school. <laughs> and a master's from the University of Illinois at Chicago. With that, I give you Adelina Rivera. Next, from Beverly Scoff Elementary School, a supported education and resource teacher, Ms. Mary Arp. Mary Arp spent two years in the Rockdale School District before coming to Scoff six years ago. She holds a Bachelor's of Science in, edu in Education degree with an emphasis on art from Northern Illinois University and a Master's of Art a multi-categorical special education degree from Governor State University. With that, I give you Mary Arp. From Irene King, a fifth grade special education teacher, Karen Trakovich. Karen has been at Irene King since 2007, serving as a special education co-teacher for the past three years. Prior to coming to Valley View, she taught for a year in a multi-needs program in Lombard and a year as a resource teacher in Clarendon Hills. She holds a bachelor's degree in elementary education from Illinois State University and a master's in special education from National Lewis University. With that, I give you Karen Trakovich. And finally, from Bolingbrook High School, an AP U.S. history teacher, who I do call a personal friend, uh, Mr. John Flynn. Uh, Mr. Flynn also teaches modern world history. He came to BHS seven years ago after serving as a long-term substitute math and computer science instructor at Brooks Middle School for a year. The former president of Calero Management Information Services holds a Bachelor's of Art degree in Business and Psychology from the Augustana College and a Master's in Education from the University of St. Francis. With that, I give you Mr. John Flynn. to congratulate these four teachers. They are exceptional teachers and just a reflection of what we, uh, we offer in terms of educators to our students on a daily basis. Again, thank you all four for your efforts. Uh, thank you for the 26 previous to you and thank you to all the staff in Valley View for all the hard work you do to ensure that our kids receive a first class quality education. Thank you. As they clear out the room, uh, we'll be going to liaison reports. Any and all, please, starting from my right. Yeah, well, the academic committee has a report. And in that, the National Board Certified Teachers, one comment I'd like to add is those teachers had to videotape themselves multiple times and both critique themselves and have their professors and critique themselves. And I can't imagine that. My kids make me watch. Uh, these board meetings sometimes and it's painful <laughs> to watch myself sitting up here so uh, I can't imagine uh, critiquing your profession so uh, great congratulations to those teachers um, the academic committee has met recently and will meet again um, on the agenda have been improvements to the report card particularly at the elementary level in the areas of math 
Uh, we also will be talking about the technology, finishing up the technology rollout in second, third, and fourth grade. Uh, so we're looking forward to those things. Also on the Illinois State Scholars combined in our district in the last two years, our district's up 30% in the number of Illinois State Scholars. Okay, the Parent Resource Night will be this Thursday, January 17th at uh, John Lukanzik. Uh, that will be at 6.30. Safety and security is uh, Wednesday, uh, this coming Wednesday. We are happy um, also to be adding some students to that council as well. Anyone else? Uh, as I said, the uh, General Assembly earlier uh, from a, the government committee uh, has retired for the 97th and started with the new 98th General Assembly. They have a small problem of about a $96 billion deficit that they're going to have to figure out how they're going to solve. Uh, that's the pension deficit, a structural issue. Uh, we just beg and ask and plead that they don't do it on the backs of the local school districts. Illinois is woefully underfunded with the money that they give to education. We all know that. Uh, there's no quick fix to this. Uh, it didn't happen overnight. They know it didn't happen overnight. And I said earlier, the General Assembly chose to punt. Again, the first bill that was announced was Senate Bill 1 and that is a pension fix so uh let's just see what that what happens with that uh there are i think 26 new house members and a, maybe a dozen new senate members i forget the total numbers so there's a lot of new faces going to be down in springfield and uh we have two here in will county with uh senator torino uh, and uh representative manley that represent our district i have met with them both i will meet with them again to go over and with uh, Dr. Mitchum, Mr. Guzafi to go over our financial bleak picture uh, that what if they try to fix their pension uh, what our how bleak it may look for us as a district and uh, let them know what it means to our district they are making the rounds to local government folks and uh, I want to thank them both for that as well as our other legislators that represent uh, Will County but we will continue to uh, uh, represent ourselves down there we have statewide associations to help us with that issue but again uh, when you talk to a state rep or if you see one tell them not on the backs of the local taxpayers the state's got a problem don't solve it on our backs so moving down the agenda audience uh, audience participation anybody who wishes to present their views to the board this evening seeing none action Reports, student due process cases A through K as amended. Uh, Mr. President, I would ask that the board approve these items as presented. Motion to approve. So moved. moved. Second. Motion and seconded. Roll call vote, please. Member Hansen? Yes. Member Campbell? Yes. Member Curran? Yes. Secretary Bull? Yes. Vice President Gugis? Yes. President Quigley? Yes. Action reports. Mrs. Oh. Kinder, go. I'm sorry. Yes, thank you, President Quigley. Action Report 11.1 .1 is regarding restructuring plans for three elementary schools, Irene King, John, John, uh, J.R. Tibbet, Independence, five middle schools, AVM, BMS, HHH, JA, and JJL, I'll, A. Vito Martinez, Brooks Middle School, Humphrey Middle School, Jane Adams, and John J. Lukanzik, and two high schools, Bolingbrook High School and Romeoville High School. The attached report um, seeks approval for the restructuring plans for these schools. Um, these schools um, were required to restructure per guidelines of the Illinois State Board of Education. A, a school who is required to restructure um, after consecutive years of not meeting the targets as defined um, by AYP, adequate yearly progress, is required to choose one of four options. Um, the more severe or significant options could range from reopening the school as a charter, replacing all or most of the staff, including administration, um, entering into a contract with an outside entity or a private management company, and then the fourth option, which is the option that we have selected, is to implement other major restructuring of the school's governance that makes fundamental reform in management or government governance, financing, and material resources, and or staffing. Um, seeing that we had made fundamental reforms at the, the district level last year and this school year for all of these schools, um, we went ahead with this plan and the plan is submitted um, for your approval and then would be submitted to the Illinois State Board of Education for approval. Motion to approve the plan so as presented. Second. Motion and second. Is there any discussion? Uh, yes, briefly. Um, 
Assistant Superintendent Kinder, uh, first I'd like to thank you for a job well done on this. Um, in the past, I have uh, had issue with our restructuring plans. At some point, they were single pages long, and I didn't think the process was taken seriously. I cannot stress enough how much improvement I see, particularly in the middle schools. Um, their improvement plans um, really reflect, I think, what we're doing in the district. And uh, so I'm, I'm happy, really happy on that, on that point. Um, and I think a lot of these improvement plans we see, uh, obviously when we're measuring with the ISAT, we're, we're not talking um, like versus like or student growth, really. So in a lot of these improvement plans, you see the growth that we've had in the last couple of years. But I, I really think that I have confidence in our plan for the first time. Um, and particularly at the middle school level and the elementary level to uh, 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 Venus. Um, I don't want to leave that out, but I've seen some changes in the high school, but these plans have gotten uh, so much better. So I guess uh, the question I had for you on that is, what um, of, of these things that you've implemented, what do you think is having the most success? Um, well, first I'd like to say that I think many times this is just viewed as a compliance piece, and yes, we have to stay in compliance to do this, but more than 80% of the districts in Illinois are um, not making AYP, and many are moving into this phase, and some of our schools have been there longer than others, so we've been trying many different efforts, um, and I, I really think it would be hard to pinpoint any one effort um, that that would say that this is going to have the most impact. I truly think it's a collective whole. Everything from how we've restructured teaming um, and building leadership teams to adjusting how we use staffing to um, bringing in additional um, interventions in addition to the work that we're doing to strengthen our core curriculum. Um, and there's just a, a plethora of things and most notable and public ones too that are very apparent. Um, the addition of all day kindergarten, for example, will have a significant impact on our um, elementary sites all the way up. So it's very difficult to pinpoint just one. Okay, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll ask you about just one. Then. Okay. What about Odyssey? Um, you know, that was a, a plan that we, we, we implemented this school year. How's that going and how does that fit into our restructuring plan? Um, it, it's actually going very well and um, we, of course, are watching all, all indicators very closely so that we're able to make programmatic adjustments and make sure that we're meeting the benchmarks that we set for ourselves. Um, we have been reviewing data internally, and we have re received an outside review um, from the company as well. And all our positive indications, um, we've, we've showed significant gains um, above what students would have gained without the intervention when we compared to last year's students. Also, we showed um, significant gains above what was to be expected with typical growth. And um, when you compare students who are in enhancement using this program to not in enhancement using the program, there is some significant difference as well. So while it's early and we cannot draw any conclusions from this data, we can certainly say that the, the signs are positive that we um, are making some progress. And we, we look at other data. We've surveyed the teachers. We've surveyed the students. and. Um, we will use that information as well to make adjustments where needed, but so far we're, we're definitely moving in the right direction. Thank you. Any further uh, discussion? If not, a roll call vote would be in order. Member Hansen? Yes. Member Campbell? Yes. Member Curran? Yes. Secretary Bull? Yes. Vice President Gugis? Yes. President Quigley? Yes. Mr. Grisafi, action reports. Action Report 12.1 is a request for, to approve Resolution 1337, uh, the Intergovernmental Agreement with the Illinois Office of the Comptroller to access and participa participate in its local debt recovery program. This is a program that allows units of local government to collect outstanding debt in coordination with the Illinois Comptroller's Office. Uh, school districts can request the state to withhold any payments to individuals receiving a payment from the state of Illinois. Uh, for such things as a state income tax refund, lottery winnings, state employee wages, or any contractual work that might uh, be performed on behalf of the state. The district would use this program to collect from the parent or guardian of students who have exited, dropped, or graduated and have unpaid fees totaling $10 or greater and debt that is less than seven years old. The state will charge the parents or guardian a $15 fee and it's important to note that there is no fee or no cost uh, for this program to the school district. Currently there are 3,780 former students over totaling, uh, owing uh, over $399,000 in unpaid fees and fines to Valley View. Uh, we send multiple letters home um, 
uh, outlining their outstanding fees at the beginning of each school year and throughout the year until they are paid. Uh, and as, at such time, they uh, is still owed and outstanding. Uh, the district will uh, send records to the state to be matched with those in the state database until a payment such as a state income tax refund or lottery wings is made to that account, at which time the state takes an offset of the payout to pay outstanding debt recovery requests. Offsets are paid out on a first come, first serve basis. Uh, what that means is if there is a municipality that uh, filed a similar type of debt recovery request uh, and they were first in line, then they would be paid first and we would be second. Uh, if we were first in line before municipality, park district, what have you, uh, we would be, be paid first. Uh, the debtor is notified in writing that an offset is being held to pay outstanding debt requests submitted by a governmental agency. Uh, the debtor has 60 days to contest the offset request. Uh, if the debtor wants to contest the claim, a written request to the Illinois State Comptroller's Office must be submitted within that 60-day time frame. Uh, if no uh, letter is received, um, an offset is not contested, the funds are received by, uh, and forwarded by the school district. Uh, so it's a pretty straightforward program. We've had a meeting with, uh, with the representative from the Comptroller's Office. Uh, we are uh, ready to upload a file, uh, prepare a press release so that there's adequate notice to our uh, community. Uh, and we will uh, make every attempt to collect on these uh, these outstanding debts to us. Thank you. Uh, we need a motion. So moved. Second. Motion second. Is there any discussion? Um, I, uh, with the debt being so high on this particular piece, what do we have in place so that we don't keep accruing this year after year with our students? Uh, about six years ago, we put in place a student accounts receivable package. Uh, prior to that, there was no such package. Um, we, uh, we are now accounting for any and all fines that, uh, that a, uh, a student would incur uh, throughout their time with us. Um, we send multiple letters home. Uh, we are um, uh, putting together a call night to allow uh, families um, uh, an opportunity to get current on their, on their uh, outstanding fees. Uh, I, I do feel, in fact, this year was probably our best year in terms of collections. Um, uh, but oftentimes, if there's a fee owed, and, these, and this, what we're talking about is just people that have left our district. Um, so no, they haven't graduated. Because like, have, I know you have correct. some stops at graduation. They can't do certain things. You can't get transcripts. So these right, are students have, that haven't gone all the way through then. Correct. There are uh, um, class trips that uh, may be denied. Mm -hmm. uh, there may be promotional ceremonies at the uh, eighth grade uh, level uh, uh, and potentially at high school um, where um, we won't release official transcripts uh, until such time as those fees are paid. Uh, and so we continue to work uh, um, within the realm of, of uh, compassion uh, to uh, work with our families uh, to, to keep them current. Uh, we instituted a late fee a couple years ago uh, that seems to have helped uh, uh, to uh, tr you know, have folks try to avoid uh, incurring that. Um, we do use a collection agency to, uh, to uh, help us in these efforts uh, after our local efforts are, uh, are put forward. So uh, it continues to be a struggle. Any further discussion? I uh, spoke to somebody in the Comptroller's office about this program uh, recently, and their response was to my question of how surprised are people when this happens to them. And his response was not very surprised. They know that they owe. It's just they didn't know that we have another mechanism <laughs> to go collect now. And uh, so I want to commend them for their efforts in helping local government you know, to, you know, entities out too. So uh, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, roll call vote, please. Member Hansen? Yes. Member Campbell? Yes. Member Curran? Yes. Secretary Bull? Yes. Vice President Gugis? Yes. President Quigley? Yes. Next item is a resolution 1338 asking your, uh, for your approval with the Will County Transportation Consortium uh, approving an intergovernmental agreement for contracting transportation employee testing services. Uh, what this is is the lab services. <coughs> uh, that we uh, bid out with 16 other districts. Uh, it's a two-year program, uh, or contract rather, for uh, uh, pre-hire testing, annual physicals, and required random and accidental related testing, uh, drug testing in the event of a uh, transportation accident. Uh, this is something we've done over the mass, uh, uh, past several years, uh, and uh, we do have uh, Joliet High School District 204 as the administrator, administrating agent uh, for this program. Uh, again, it's really just a uh, uh, 
uh, scale of economy in terms of uh, allowing them to provide us with the service at a, at a reduced rate. I do, I do recommend approval. So moved. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Member Hansen? Yes. Member Campbell? Yes. Member Curran? Yes. Secretary Bull? Yes. Vice President Gugis? Yes. President Quigley? Yes. Moving down the agenda. Consolidated, yeah. Human resources, Ms. Hawks. <laughs> Let's go with that. Thank you, President Quigley. Action Report 13.1 this evening. We're bringing for your approval the Consolidated Action Report for Certified and Classified Personnel. Uh, we're seeking your approval on 28 items for certified personnel, 47 for classified, four for classified administrative personnel, and one for certified administrative personnel. Motion to approve. So, so moved. moved. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, hearing none. Roll call vote, please. Member Hansen? Yes. Member Campbell? Yes. Member Curran? Yes. Secretary Bull? Yes. Vice President Gugis? Yes. President Quigley? Yes. Uh, Superintendent's information reports. Yes, uh, good evening again. Actually, um, information report 14.1 brings forth a draft calendar for the 13 14 school year, which is being brought forth for informational purposes this evening. Um, in the fall of 2011, a calendar committee um, recommended that this calendar um, be put forth. This committee consisted of certified and classified staff members from all grade levels, including union representation and parent repre representatives as well. Um, the committee took into consideration state guidelines, legal required holidays, election days, collective bargaining agreement language, and various other input that was received from the community. Um, the goal of creating a calendar is to create one that was as conducive as possible to providing students with quality instructional time. The draft calendar that we are presenting this evening has a couple significant changes. Um, the school year does um, begin slightly earlier and that is to accommodate a change to end the first semester prior to um, the winter break. So students would take final exams at the high school level prior to winter break. Um, and that is um, a somewhat significant change, although many schools in our area do already do that. Um, this change was made based by feedback um, that was brought to the committee as well as feedback that the com um, community submitted um, and that includes parents and staff members. So this draft um, committee um, calendar that I'm showing you this evening will be posted online and anyone in the community wishing to um, submit feedback may do so. Um, at that point we will take the um, feedback and bring it back to you for approval. If there are um, pending changes or ongoing changes with, um, due to union negotiations or any state mandate changes, we would then um, bring back a revised calendar at that time for your information and approval. Thank you. Next, software licensing. Yes, information report 14.2 is a uh, request for consideration by the board to change the methodology for which it acquires enterprise level software from Microsoft. It is estimated that moving from a purchase model to a subscription model would result in a projected cost avoidance of approximately $374,000 over the next three years. Uh, in the information report, there's uh, a lot of background information uh, as to how this would be accomplished. Um, it also speaks to the instructional need for the Microsoft Office suite at this time, uh, as well as alter alternatives to Microsoft that the district senior leadership uh, is um, uh, evaluating uh, in terms of uh, getting us out possibly from under the umbrella of Microsoft and its product uh, line. Uh, and so uh, until such time as we make that decision uh, and uh, conversion uh, to a no-cost solution, uh, if indeed it, that is uh, warranted, uh, we are uh, recommending that uh, uh, we move from a purchase model to a subscription model. Uh, and so at this, uh, we're not asking for any action this evening. We just wanted to give you an idea of what, uh, what the parameters are. Uh, and if there are no further questions or objections, we would bring this to the next meeting. Um, Mike, I just have one question about this. My, my concern or question would be uh, if we go to this modeling, I, I, and I'm all for saving money, don't get me wrong. I just want to know that we're not going to get hung out to dry in two or three four or five years as the technology changes because we're all owned by some of these big, you know, Microsoft, whoever they are. I'm certainly not a technology guy, but I use it to the best of my limited capacities. I'm sure that Mr. Tefano and Ed all have gone over this thing with fine tooth comb. But it, it, I just want, if you guys have vetted through all that as far as a long term Anytime you, you put your, uh, your eggs in a basket, so to speak, you are going to yeah. be beholden to that entity. Uh, and that, that concerns us as well. Yeah. Um, 
one of the, one of the uh, the largest benefit, other than saving money with the subscription model, is the ability to stay current with our software throughout the district on a subscription basis. Uh, once you buy a uh, uh, Office 2003, for instance, you you own that license, and in order to move to a 2010, for right. instance, you would have to pay that upgrade fee and, and install it. Uh, and so this just has a lot more logistical uh, benefits, uh, as well as uh, uh, economic benefits in keeping those uh, those uh, suites you know, more up-to-date across uh, all of our uh, uh, computers. If we go to the future of the world at some point and end up with something like what Mr. Gujas has here in front of him, uh, will this type of system have anything to do with that? I mean, will it be more cost savings by being in, and that's, I don't know if you guys asked that question, but. Absolutely. I mean, instead of sending the whole, kids the whole home with books, we'd rather send them home with this. Right now, we can't afford it. The idea of, of, of uh, um, deployment via the cloud, uh, the nebulous cloud, so to speak, uh, provides us that, that ability. Uh, bring your own technology where uh, uh, a student can bring any flavor of handheld device or, or tablet device, uh, where maybe the district gets out of the business of providing the device, so to speak. Um, having your students check it at the door, put it away, put it in your backpack, your locker, what have you. Because uh, that's what they use, that's what they know, that's what they like to use, and that's how they operate day to day. Uh, and so uh, m many, most of the prognosticators, that's, that's what uh, they're, sh they're saying is going to happen. Uh, right. Are we ready for that? That's something that we're wrestling with right now, so that when 18,000 students walk through the door with their own device, can we provide them with a wireless uh, uh, hookup, if you will, to the Internet? Uh, we don't have that uh, infrastructure uh, in place today. Uh, and so we're hoping to do something here in short order to uh, uh, provide that uh, if and when it happens, and I think it's going to. Yeah. I still like to read a good book now and then, but also I recognize where the technology is and the cost that we spent on. We spent, what was it, $460,000 a couple years ago on replacing books at the fourth or fifth grade level? The, the, book, the English books were worn down and we had to go to a new set of books. Whatever it was, some books. And you know, that's a lot of iPads, a lot of laptops, whatever it is, but if it's, if it's efficient to do it that way, it's the way the world's moving. And uh, eventually, you know, and again, I like to read my Sunday trip too, so I don't get it online. But it, at some point, the dinosaurs like me, we're gonna all die off, and these kids that are in our schools today, they're gonna touch their TV, which you can already do, and that's gonna be their computer and the rest of the world. But we're all gonna be, I'll be long dead before that happens probably, so. Anyway, uh, well, actually, I probably won't be. <laughs> <laughs> It'll probably happen in the next couple of weeks. Um. But anyway, I just want—if we're going to make these technology steps, I want to make sure that everything is as efficient as possibly. I don't want to come back in three years from now and say, "Well, we did this, but now we got to do that, and it costs more money." So, uh, I've had technology up to here this month. So, moving down the agenda. Wait, Thank hold you. On one second. Oh, <laughs> Mr. Gujas, uh, you're assistant. more technological savvy I, than I am. I'm just going to ask a, my favorite question, Assistant uh, Superintendent Grzafi. Um, I know we don't have the kindergartners on cloud, but I was wondering how many students we had on cloud currently. Uh, in terms of how many are eligible to use cloud? Oh no, I know I know how many that is. That's all of them. How many have access? Yeah. Uh, I I don't have that number. Uh, Six, seven. Okay. We'll provide you that number. Thank you. Moving down the agenda. Let's see. We did the school calendar. We did this legal service. Mr. Alperin. No report this evening. Thank you, sir. AFT. No Thank you. Uh, Valley View Council. No report. Thank you. Valley View Office Personnel Council. No report. Thank you. Any old business before the board this evening? Any new business before the board this evening? Any questions from the public on action we have taken this evening? Hearing none, seeing none. And let's see, announcements by the board. Uh, this week, uh, freshman orientation, oh, I'm sorry, last week, freshman orientation at um, both high schools um, was held and I missed it. I was here at a meeting, we had a four hour meeting here and I did not get to attend it, but I enjoy freshman orientation almost more for not the excitement of the students, but a little bit of the fear of the parents. <laughs> and as they look at their young and going off to uh, high school, but um, if you haven't been, it's a really exciting time. I know President Quigley uh, got to attend at BHS as his oldest son will be attending there next year. Um, so congratulations and a great job on that from the feedback I heard to both high schools on their freshman orientation. 
Sorry, I couldn't attend. And for some reason, you guys always do it on the same night. I guess we're just that consolidated, you know, uniform district. That's why we do it then. But also wanted to make mention, uh, Amy Ruspis, who was up here just a little bit ago, um, is doing a nonprofit um, uh, organization called Chimes, and she's collecting the um, instruments um, that are in probably many of our our homes and closets that our students no longer use. And I think it's a wonderful uh, project to give instruments and get them in the hands of our uh, younger students who could not afford to buy those instruments. So check that out. Is she, still, Chimes. Is she still here? No, she left. Dang. I was looking I, for her. I have an accordion. <laughs> well, that's not really Can't play where it. we're headed. Bel believe it or not, it was bequeathed <laughs> to me about 15 years ago, and it's sitting in my garage. It's white, and it still plays as far as I know. So if they would like I, an accordion, I'm not sure that's I just wanted to go to a good home. It was from my great-great-aunt. <laughs> Who came yes. off the boat in Germany? I think that was the only possession. And you never picked it up and tried to play it? No, no. I, yeah. yeah, but not <laughs> seriously. No. The, the, I think I didn't know where you get accordion lessons. And I have woodwinds no and things like that. I'm just glad my kids haven't decided to try and take that up. Um, let's see where else? Oh, uh, under the uh, announcements by the board, I did attend as a parent. Uh, I, I sat in the crowd as a parent because I am a parent. My son's going to be in school next year at BHS. And uh, just like everybody else, uh, you know, as Member Gru just said, uh, there's uh, anticipation of this, your kids and there's nervousness of the parent and all that kind of stuff. And I really kind of thought it was kind of funny because kids that I've coached over the years uh, in various, that are in various schools and what have you, uh, their parents are all coming up there and talking and stuff. And I think the kids that are involved in local sports programs and other local programs, dance force and so on and so forth that we have, they may be going to different grade schools and junior highs, but when they see the, each other at the high school, all of a sudden it's like a big, you know, all these kids are hugging each other and talking and stuff. And I found that very refreshing that as our communities come together at the high schools, because that's really what it's all about. All those kids may be in different grade schools and so on and so forth, and they see each other, you know, a handful of games and sporting events through the summer, but then their freshman year, it all kind of comes back together. So I'm very excited for my son and uh, his friends. So. Any announcements by the administration? I'm sorry, I have one more. I just want to point out, we haven't met since the tragedy that happened in Sandy Hook. And obviously, you know, our thoughts and prayers are, are with that, with those families and, and, and the kids at those schools, um, or at that school, excuse me. Uh, just for the public to know, our safety audits have begun in our district. It's an ongoing process, and um, it's something that's of the utmost importance, the safety of our, our kids. First and foremost, Mr. Brown is in the back of the room nodding that Things are always under his watchful eye. And for that, I'm very grateful. Uh, next, any announcements by the administration? No announcements. Any announcements by the public? Motion to adjourn would be so moved. We have a motion and a second. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Ayes have it, we stand adjourned. Thank you, have a great evening. Be safe out there.